Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number 18. Now, normally we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. However, this recap, I wanted to do something different and focus specifically on how to improve our drift train skills. For the majority of this video, I want you to really focus on the track camera at the top, as that's where the majority of my editing was focused and really where you're going to see most of the moments that I point out in this video. And last thing before we get started, this video will be more of the quote unquote bad drift train moments versus what we normally see in these type of videos. The moments I chose in this video are drift train turbulence that happen specifically behind me. So that way the name tags are included as this video isn't a shine focus on specific driver mistakes, but rather a chance for us to all kind of inspect, learn and improve together. This video took a lot longer than normal, so let me know what you think. I really hope this video helps those watching uh, to improve and learn. And as always, our server and Discord links are in the description. That said, let's get into it. We are starting out today on Steel Yard by C. Toretto. A quick note before we kind of get into the driving, as I added a little bit of extra footage here for this intro section. Uh, I actually was using a different PB filter at the beginning, uh, actually on Steel Yard, and I think the next track uh, was Segoya. After that, I switched back. So if you see a graphic change, that's really mainly why, honestly. And uh, I might want to, I was thinking about maybe talking about this later, but I'll just mention it here. It does seem like the uh, PP filter that you do choose, at least for VR, makes a massive performance difference. Uh, it was a very stark contrast. I'm actually going to be doing some testing with a different filter tomorrow and uh, see that how that helps me out. So just wanted to call that out. Uh, also, the driving from me, I think it was a little bit more conservative just because of those issues. So that said, I also, again, as we have a little bit of extra time here, um, the things that we want to focus on here on that top camera, we're going to be looking at proximity. We're going to be talking about creating a little bit of space with drivers that maybe you're not used to driving with or if you're not feeling super confident. We're going to talk about a little bit of resetting, just a little bit of etiquette in general. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, I, I'm just going to try to call it out as best as I can. There's going to be some moments that I really have to just kind of rapid fire through. So hang on with me. If you guys do want to see like a more uh, long form version of just kind of like very uh, detailed and uh, descriptive of like, oh, this is what happened here. You can see this and then this led to that. Uh, let me know. I I'd love to know. But yeah, we're following Yasko, I believe, here in the chase position. I'm just trying to keep that proximity with him, trying to match the angle best as I can. Every time I transition, as I mentioned, I was having a little bit of performance stuttering on my uh, headset anyway, so uh, a lot less uh, forward than I really should be. But really, even that said, I'm just trying to match those transition timings as that's going to make a big difference in being able to maintain proximity with the person in front of you. Anyway let's go ahead we're going to be switching over here to Segoya park and this is going to be where the video i think is going to pick up uh, for a lot of things that i wanted to talk about so here i'm in a p2 position when you're in a p2 as i mentioned before if you're not in the beginning or the very back you're basically doing a lead and a chase at the same time so here if you look at p3 and p4 p5 you can kind of see a little bit of static generating there the line was taking a little bit weird. You can see P4 taking a very shallow line, creating that accordion effect that we've talked about in previous videos where there's a lot of space and a little bit of space. And typically that crunch is actually going to, and also where that proximity gets grown, um, creates a lot of static. You can see there in P4 having a lot of problems. I think really at, the, at some point, uh, it's just better to reset, man. There will always be another train, especially on our servers. There'll be another time you can just jump in. Um, looks like he was able to jump back in, but remember, you do have people behind and in front of you, and you're going to see again a lot in this video where, you know, someone's in a certain position, they're making a lot of uh, mistakes. And you know what? If you're new to trains, if you're new to maybe even drifting in general, I always recommend if you're feeling the pressure, if you feel like you're making too many mistakes, just take a quick reset, jump back to the back, uh, and then just kind of ride it through. And I think as people do that, uh, you know, the really solid drivers will be in the front the less solid drivers will be in the back and it'll be kind of a natural process where, you know, the better you are, the higher of a position you end up getting uh, typically. Kind of like a natural selection thing. And there you can see the train's seeing a lot more static, P4, taking kind of an interesting line. The big thing here I really want to mention is that you want to match not only the angle of the person in front of you, 
but you really want to match their line. Sometimes you're going to want to adapt it. There are some times that I do, depending on the driver. But typically, if you're in a position like I am in P2, uh, or sorry, P3, but up there in P2, uh, you really, really, really want to try to be almost a, a mirror as the uh, lead driver here. So here we are. I'm now on a lead position. You can see a pretty big train behind me. And there you can see P3, a little bit of wavering. And that little bit of wavering, you see P4, P5 go out of place. P3 having a really hard time. This track will punish you if you're not on the right line. And you can kind of see that here. He's having a lot of struggle. P4 is a little bit out of pocket. There you can see they're trying to adapt and create a lot more proximity for that P3 position. Uh, but it's kind of putting them off the line. P2 going a little bit too far, staying a little bit too connected to me on P1, and then having to take a longer line to kind of make up for that. And when you go into a wider line or a longer line, they're, they're really just going to generate natural uh, uh, proximity, and then you're going to have to pull that up. And then there you go, you know, accordion is formed. But now we switch over the rhythm and flow. I'm here in the P2 position. We're going to be looking around behind us at P3 and beyond. You can see a little bit of tap from P4 on P3. And then P4 having a really hard time trying to adjust. P3 not taking the same angle. And you can see that uh, a little bit too shallow, kind of making it hard for him to stay on that line that we're on. We're going to see a transition here. And then we'll see P3 trying to stick there, looking a lot better on the angle there. P4 looking good as well. And you're going to notice too, throughout this video, when people are matching the right angle and hitting the same lines, it'll look a lot more stable. There you can see P3 making a little bit of a modification of their line. Not too bad, though. The train was able to stick with it. And this is, again, what I just want to hammer this home. If you see this kind of turbulence, if it doesn't seem very consistent, if you're kind of like, oh, I'm not too, really too sure about this, adding a little bit oh additional God. proximity yeah. is good. It's okay. We all want to be on each other's doors, but sometimes the best thing for the train and for the people really in front or behind you is to generate just a little bit more proximity just so you can stay on that same line, stay on that same angle, and uh, still like not lose that momentum and have that accordion. So here you can kind of see the train losing a lot of people. Uh, I think there was a little bit of issues with P3. There you can see me on the accordion. P, I guess technically four, slowing down. I'm trying to salvage it, taking a little bit of a different line there and then trying to stay on that maintain and proximity. And this is another thing that I've mentioned in previous videos. When you're on that catch up, you still want to be followable for other drivers. It's a really important thing. That way uh, you're not ruining the experience of other people behind us. And I think in a general sense, just speaking here, uh, you really want to make sure like when you're in these trains that you're not ruining other people's experience or ability to drift. I think that's where people get the most annoyed and where the, uh, you know, like public lobbies get the most not ours, I would say, but I just like public lobbies in general. Get really frustrating because you can't even drive, right? When you when you hinder other people's ability to drive, I think that creates a lot of frustration, and you know that's why you you don't see people joining up with you or uh, not joining in trains. But here again, you can see a little bit on P. I think that's P5 there having a little bit of issues. It looks like they're absorbing things okay. P3 having a little bit of an adapted line there as well. So far, the train's kind of sticking together, but you can see it's a little bit. A little bit of static happening here. But now we switch over to BHS Drift Playground. For full transparency here, uh, we weren't on this track for a ton. We actually were fully full 32 stack on Rhythm and Flow. Uh, we thought BHS Drift Playground would be cool, really fun. Uh, but it is a fun track genuinely. It just is really hard on performance. There's a lot of uh, reasons why that I won't get into. Uh, but we decided to switch after just a little bit. So I just wanted to show a little bit of lead, show a chase behind me. Uh, I went through a lot. I think this was a, a good one to showcase. Now, in this situation where you're just on a tandem, so you have uh, you know one, two cars, maybe arguably three, I think that the mistakes that you'll see on the P2 position, they're right there, that line, that modification, super shallow is okay. You know, especially if you're learning, especially if you know the person that you're drifting with. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to just get better and not have any really ramifications for making these type of mistakes. But when you're in a train, like this is kind of the things that I'm saying, you really want to kind of tighten down and really lock in as best you can and try to create a very chaseable uh, experience for the other people around you. But now we switch over to Takamaki. Server was also still packed at this point, was absolutely insane. Um, 
I, I wish I could remember every single clip that I edited. There's so many clips in here. Uh, but basically, again, we're going to keep an eye out on the track cam. You see that person right behind me, right on my door, but having to take a very shallow angle to maintain. So then we're now on that transition on the uphill. Again, just looking at the track camera here. Train's looking pretty good. A little bit of issues but looks like the train is absorbing it now right there i took a little bit wider of a line um and actually like uh angled my drift and that actually made a mistake for everyone behind me so i did actually even want to point out some mistakes that i made um so that way i can prove and and honestly like this is learning uh this video is a learning process and experience for all of us so uh i did include a couple tracks and a couple spaces that even i made mistakes right there, we all have uh room to grow basically is my point so yeah, here, uh, looking at it, this section right there always seems to have a little bit of issues. You can see that red car there making the mistake. Probably at that point in a train like this, you, you probably just want to reset not to mess people up. Uh, but you know, again, they are <clears throat> in the back, not completely in the back, but uh, you know, I'd say it's not a biggest deal end of the world. But here, uh, you can see me just generating a ton of proximity. Uh, really unsure and then this section now what's crazy is that actually two cars in front of me there was a mistake that was made they were a little bit too locked into that pocket zone didn't leave the person in front of them room to transition when they transitioned they were having to scrub a lot of speed break a little bit maybe add a little bit more angle than the car in front of me actually uh, ended up getting uh, yeeted out of the train so this is kind of like again like you can see how fast this all happens. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to genuinely commentate in real time, add as much detail as I can, but you can see like how dynamic you have to be in these trains and uh, willing to adapt, but also really think about the person in front or the people rather in front of you and also the people behind you. <coughs> Excuse me, almost cough. <coughs> uh, are driving, how they're reacting so you can change there you can see a little bit of a stab on P3 into the car, able to stabilize it. I was adding a little bit of proximity so there wasn't too many uh, of an issue. But uh, that brings us over to Lime Rock. And yeah, man, I, I feel like I'm flying through this, but I'm really trying to capture this. I think all of these, I had a clip in here that I was like, oh yeah, this is really good. Now, this track on Lime Rock specifically, I learned something very valuable for myself and uh, was kind of like shaking my head a little bit at what I learned. And it's actually around this section. I always saw people taking this section incorrectly and it looks like I might be one of those people. So here, I take a little bit too shallow and you can see the three drivers behind me, if not the one behind me, was expecting a wider line. And for some reason, I think with the chaser specifically, I'm a little bit of afraid of the back end going out. It feels a lot further than really I'm used to driving. So I'm taking a lot more of a shallow line, I think. And I thought genuinely until editing this video that that was a line that people should take. But I actually added a few additional clips of Lime Rock so you can see that line decision that I'm making, a lot of times not in agreement with the P1 or the lead driver is causing issues for the entire train. And this is a, something that I have seen a lot of people do, but uh, like mess up, but even specifically me right there. Now that was a lot better from me, but you saw on P4 and beyond, past him making a little bit of mistakes the train able to absorb it and again that's why we want to add these pockets of proximity where hey if this person in front of you makes a mistake you don't have to adjust too much to then like keep the train going or to not slam into the person in front of you and also if the person behind you is adding a little bit of pocket then that way uh you guys can compress without smacking into each other basically uh so we're gonna watch this again i think there's two more including this one of this line rock so watch p1's line i'm gonna i think i go a little bit more shallow here uh actually make a mistake and look at this all behind me i messed up p3 p4 p5 p6 and would have even messed up more people if there was more people right just because of that more shallow line and i think that long line uh that long outside line is a little bit more important than i really thought because it gives the ability for the train to not crunch and to also extend that drift out and be a little bit more smooth. I thought that the inside line, midline would be a lot more beneficial for that forward momentum. But I think in this case, like you can see again, the, ram the ramifications of doing that. So here transitioning, we're going to look for that spot. He goes a little bit wide. I don't agree with the line. I go shallow and look at this. 
P3, because they added enough space, was able to absorb my mistake without messing up the rest of the train. But if that proximity was not set up, that would have been catastrophic. So I hope that's really helpful. I feel like I learned something uh, quite significant there. So hopefully that is helpful. I've seen a lot of people make mistakes there, including myself, as we saw. But now we switch over to uh, Euphoria Hills. Now, we were on this track, man, for quite a while. It sounds like uh, people are starting to turn around on this track. I've always liked it. But this track, I definitely don't have the experience for. Uh, I did just want to show, I believe I have just one lead run. Uh, we want to watch the track camera, not so much the lines. We're, we're really, again, focusing on the trains. So here, taking a little bit of an inside line, you can see I typically like to e-brake there. I don't think the person uh, behind me in P2 uh, really left enough space in general. Uh, it is really tempting to want to be on people's doors. But here's what I will say, uh, you know, in addition, even if there's people that you've driven with that you're pretty used to how they drive, if you're on a track that you're not really uh, sure how they drive, it is really a good idea to add that proximity. That way, if they make a mistake, you're not having to eat it and the people behind you, AKA the entire train is having to eat it either. So here, like just kind of watch, um, it's a little distracting with uh, 40k screaming randomly behind in my ear here but i'm trying to take these forward momentum lines pushing it through we're going to see what the train's going to do as you can see the train is kind of dying a little bit we want to see is the p2 and p3 matching the angle of the line and this area specifically i've seen a lot of people mess up i think this was a pretty bad line for me which is why i included it you could kind of see i had to make a mid line adjustment where if I would have gone a little bit maybe uh, more outside, I could have made that a lot more fluid. And then this section here too, I like to go midline to inside to go forward, but you can see right there, P2 and P3 were not expecting that line. They were expecting a different line, caused a little bit of turbulence within the train itself. I know it's only four people, but you know, I, I thought it was good to show uh, not only me making mistakes, but also how your lead can impact others even though you might say oh dude i'm killing on this lead like no one's following me no one can chase me like every time i run i don't know what's going on that's a great example of the lines you're taking are just not going to be cohesive uh for or conducive maybe is the right word uh for a train right and this is why i always talk about train lines forward momentum not always going on the outside zone and you know what like my opinions might change uh as i learn as i grow as i try to improve myself but as of right now, uh, pretty hard stance on that from everything that I've driven and, uh, and experienced in, in a set, I would say actually probably mainly, but here again, we know there's a crazy entry. You could even throw it backwards. I don't know. I'm adding a lot of that proximity there. You can see on P2 just in case, cause I had no idea how that he's going to take that line. Now, although the train does have a lot of pocket proximity built in there, which is not ideal, the train at least is still there. And I think that's really important here. So I'm adding a little bit of procs, not trying to go too crazy, really trying my best here genuinely to match the line and the angle of P2. I'm watching P1 to see how they drive, but I'm really focused on P2's angle. And right there, you can see me taking a lot more shallow, especially in track cam, a lot more shallow of a line that it then had to uh, basically eat some of that proximity, which I didn't really leave much of. And when I don't have proximity to burn through, that's going to make someone collide behind me if they're not adding that proximity just in case too, right? So again, really important, like really think about these lines. The angle that you take is so crucial, but also the uh, the line as well is a really big deal, especially for those of you that might be struggling with having that constant proximity or having the close proximity, or maybe you're driving behind someone, you're like every time, like, you know, transition, they just pull away from me. That could be a reason why. And right there, you can see P2 making a little bit of an adjustment that I wasn't quite sure of. I made a little adjustment to match him. There even, you can see me modifying the line uh, to try to help out the train and keep that forward momentum. I think overall was a net positive, but I genuinely would recommend trying not to do that as much as you can. A, so you can kind of learn how their lines are affecting others, but B, not all the time you're gonna have the right lines. Um, and, and speaking honestly, like sometimes I'm not right either. I, I mean. I don't want to say most of the time. Uh, I feel like I'm typically right, but as we learn about Lime Rock, totally uh, not 100% of the time. So anyways, we are now on P2 on Euphoria. You can see a little bit of late of transition on P3, P4, P5. I'm adding a lot of proximity 
to P1 here. Now, I think I'm adding a little bit more than I need to. You, go, you also saw on the track cam, someone making a mistake. Again, another call out. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Be quick on the reset. The quicker you're on the reset, the more people will uh, genuinely appreciate it and the less trains that you're going to see uh, this form. I, I don't know if that's the right word. But there, again, I would still argue taking a little bit shallower of an angle. I think it's mostly because I'm scared of that back end of the car. But there, you know, uh, P1 taking more of that mid line, which I agree with. But again, I'm trying to match his angle and I'm trying to match his line. They're making a slight modification because I felt the proximity was getting a little bit un unwieldy, uh, but able to pull it back. But you can see P3 ending up really far behind because of all those adjustments that I made. Even that one corner, uh, especially this track where it's very fast, very forward, making it's really hard to catch up basically. So adding a, having a lot of that additional proximity outside of a normal pocket, uh, making it really hard to try to like uh, creep back. And you can kind of see like the train is still trying to resync and i've talked about in this previous videos where you want to sync get that synchrony uh or maybe synchronization between you and the driver in front of you where they're transitioning you're transitioning on time with them that's going to help you stay close to the door and something else that i want to add too you know it's okay to have an additional proximity again i think it's much more important to match angle to match line with uh more proximity than to shallow and just be on their door it's not very chaseable and there you can see me uh, making another mistake or maybe not agreeing with p1's line but i would say like you know specifically p1 as of right now this driver is very good at this track has had really good trains so i think there's a learning opportunity for me specifically to be giving a little bit more trust to uh drivers especially that are having uh positive lines and positive influence on the train <clears throat> anyway we move now over to the next city i'm gonna take a drink of water so here, I'm on the lead. We're going to watch the track camera. Again, just another reminder, we want to watch the track camera here. So most of the lines, if not all of my lines on this track specifically, there are definitely so many that you can take. I really try to take these l more forward momentum uh, lines. So it is a little bit faster, but I, I do find that when you have more of this m forward momentum uh, built into these these style tracks specifically, or just even in general, it's a lot easier uh, and it's a lot more, uh, basically like mistakes can be made a little bit more throughout the train without it interrupting or, uh, completely screwing up the train. So just as I thought, but now we're on P2, we're following P1 here. So they're trying to stay with him a little bit far forward, but was able to adjust here. Now we want to see, am I matching his angle? Am I, or their angle? Am I matching, uh, their line? How does that look? You can see taking a very similar line, I think that I would take. So not having too much of an issue. Added a little bit of proximity there by accident because I was a little bit slow on that transition. And there you can see a lot of proximity added. Me having to modify the line and pull in to his door. It's hard to see on the track cam. I don't see that the train had any issues with that, but something like that genuinely can make a big difference and an impact to a train. So the better that you are about staying consistent with the proximity and that line and that angle. I know I'm harping this back and back and back, but like it is so important. It is so important. And that's going to make such a big difference on these trains. Anyways, we move over now to Osaka Sideways. Another really fun track. Now, this section right there that we just got at that little S uh, curve, very notorious for making uh, a lot of people make mistakes. It takes the train from a lot of momentum to a very slow amount of, uh, I guess, momentum or, yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to say. But here I'm in P5, trying to just stay involved, but not too involved, right? Adding a little bit more uh, proximity. And, and honestly, you know, as you get better, as you drive with these people uh, a little bit more, definitely you don't want to see this much proximity like genuinely i think it's a little bit too much even maybe now like watching it back i think it might be too much but i again i really just want to keep hammering home i think it is really important that you add a little bit of that just in case if you're not feeling confident with the people uh if they're not taking the same lines that you know whatever it might be if you see that turbulence happening in front of you adding a little bit more of that uh cushion that way if there are mistakes either by you or the people in front of you you're able to absorb that and keep that train going 
Again, we want to drive for, for the people in front of it and in back of us. All right, so now we switch over to Villain Sportsland. Now, there are a lot of clips from this one I really wanted to highlight. I tried to condense it. I actually added a lot anyway, uh, but there's a lot of moments. So here, the biggest thing is we want to match the angle. We want to match the line onto this entry. It's a massive entry. This track can feel like absolute garbage. There you can see on P5, making a big mistake, almost taking the out uh, P4 in that this track can feel really frustrating if you're not taking the right lines, if you're not doing transition uh, uh, at the same time, your transition timing at the same time. There you can see P1 making a couple of mistakes because I tapped him. But now we go into a lead run with me. And again, we want to watch the track camera. We're trying to watch the train health and see how that goes. So here, going a little bit straight, transfer, throw it in. And there you can see P2 taking a very shallow line. I genuinely would not recommend that, would not suggest that. Uh, if there was anyone really close to him, he's not going to be able to keep up. You know, arguably, this is more of like maybe a tandem. There's a third car there, not really a train. So you can say like, hey, that behavior is kind of okay. But, um, you know, I think it's really important. I like to drive like there's always a stack of people behind me, but you should be checking your map. You should be checking your proximity radar, making sure that there's not a stack of people behind you uh, if you're having a little bit of troubles like that. <clears throat> so anyway, now we're into another run. I'm on the lead. Here again, P2 taking a little bit shallower of a line, which sets up P3, P4 on a shallow line. And you can see, look at the entire train behind him. Absolutely demolished. And that is something like you're setting up everyone behind you on a shallow line, or if they're not expecting it, there was probably even a little bit of a proximity pocket there, but it just is not enough to absorb, especially on an entry that's so fast and so wide. You really have to be on the right line in the right angle. Here you can see a little bit of uh, issues right there. And right there after P3, it's all done. You know, they had to basically reset. The train is actually basically dead at this point. Uh, doesn't even matter what I'm doing at this. And also this this part too, like, again, it's okay to make mistakes, but let's reset, guys. Like, let's try to be as quick as we can. Uh, I'm sometimes guilty of it too, because it's uh, basically on my wheel as a as a hotkey. Uh, but I probably should be setting it to my wheel box or my keyboard. That way I can access it really fast and just reset if I make a mistake. And if you don't have a reset uh, bound, reset, uh, bind it. Bind, like, I was guilty at first of not thinking that I needed to uh, add that reset that is the dumbest thing that i have ever thought uh probably at least up there but uh and there you can see right there p2 on the shallow line p3 had nowhere to go and p4 kind of just having to do whatever and, and it's kind of there right again lines are really important your angle is really important this track will definitely feel terrible if you're not trying to do those uh those things and i think this is the last one from uh villain sports land but here probably is the same thing we're going to watch on the entry initiation a little bit stack in the back and again p2 on a very shallow line basically almost straight up and then look at the train right and sometimes it's like oh well they're not really that close that i wouldn't have affected them yeah but you got to remember people are watching right and i've always talked about like oh watch p2 try to mimic p2 so if people are doing exactly what i'm saying if drivers are doing exactly what i'm saying you're going to make them mess up too, right? Mistakes are totally okay, by the way. And I'm not saying like mistakes aren't a big deal, but I'm just trying to show you guys like when you're in a drift train, every mistake, everything, every, every line, not even a mistake, every line, every angle, every like way that maybe you enter something, uh, these are all going to have impact. How much you're left foot breaking, how much you're not left foot breaking. All of those things are going to affect it's like a domino effect. I've talked about this in uh, later, uh, earlier videos rather, about like the domino effect or, you know, freeway traffic. One person slows down, the next person slows down even more, even more, even more. Next thing you know, everyone stopped on the freeway for absolutely no reason, right? That's kind of the idea on a drift train. And it is such a dynamic uh, situation. You know, trains, you're talking about five, eight drivers, some that you've never driven with before. So everyone's gonna have their own style. We're trying to conform it into a nice looking train. These things will help you uh, be a little bit more cemented and focused on uh, and have the really just generally, let's just, let's just say generally have the ability to have uh, a really fun uh, experience and a smooth big drift train, right? But I forgot to say, this is Shinjuku Drift Night. Uh, sorry, Shinjuku Kart Night. Uh, this track, there wasn't really a ton of uh, synergy or things that I could point out. I think 
a a little bit because of just the track camera it's more of like a style focused one versus one that makes it a little bit easy to see you know the different mistakes that are happening uh but i think a lot of people were learning this track i actually had an issue with my pedal plate so i had to uh stop driving uh adjust my pedal plate i guess i pushed it down uh even though i tightened it the whole thing but but yeah anyway so this is really just a session for us to just maybe take a breath for me to take a drink of water as well and just kind of enjoy a little bit of the drifting um there you saw lead here i'm now in a chase kind of like think about all the things that we've talked about so far you know i've hammered it home but lines are important matching the lines matching the angle uh transitioning at the same time and building a little bit of a proximity pocket uh if you're not feeling super confident especially also if you haven't drifted with that person before or if you've drifted the person in p2 but uh maybe like not on the same track or if you just want to be a little bit cautious not anything wrong with adding a little bit of pocket proximity but don't add too much right we're we got to be reasonable here i'm not adding uh, a bus length of proximity you know i'm adding maybe a car ideally maybe even a, maybe even two depending on the situation uh but i still want to keep the train together if you start seeing that like oh every time they transition i'm late i'm not even able to i'm literally not able to transition when they're transitioning because they're physically transitioning in a different spot at the track uh when i'm at a certain position okay you might be too far right you might need to actually start thinking about okay i'm leaving a little bit too much on the table and uh now i'm instead of like a nice timed matching time transition it's looking like a game of snake right at that point um that's a little bit of a problem i'm gonna take a quick drink of water sorry guys. <clears throat> okay so that's shinjuku card night we're now going to be switching over to LD2F. Now, this is a pretty fun track. This is a very fast forward track. Think uh, similar to Nexus City. Now, there are a couple skill checks. Um, what I want you guys to maybe focus on on this one is watch for the accordioning, accordioning, uh, or the slinky, right? Basically, or the yo yoing, right? We're talking about the train all of a sudden generating a ton of proximity between drivers and then all of a sudden collapsing all that proximity i want you to watch and kind of see like where that might be happening and who or what is causing that right and again we're not focused on the drivers uh you know specifically we're just looking at the train health and seeing how that's going <laughs> yasko uh glazing me up there uh in p3 i'm uh, i'm assuming not to call out who that is but uh that sounds like it and there you see there's a car all the way on the track come on the right hand side not taking the same line again like if you're in a train and i think this is just important to say too and, and sometimes i'm guilty of it as well right like if you're in a drift train you follow the drift train line right that, that's just what it is if, if you're not really enjoying the line if you disagree with that line maybe you, you're with them for a couple times you're like yo this train is off the rails bro like i don't know what the hell these guys are doing that's chill bro uh, either you know you can go on track maybe with someone else um you know maybe another train i know sometimes in our lobbies we just like to full lobby it as much as possible uh into a train but yeah there's sometimes where people feel the same way and like hey you know we'll we'll make another train and over time over time as you're driving a track i, I think a lot of lobbies will steadily start developing a common line um, if we're all trying to adapt and, and work together and not just be a little bit uh, stubborn. And again, I'm a guilty of it sometimes too. Uh, not being too stubborn and just, you know, actually adapting and changing their line to match the way that everyone else is taking the, the, uh, the certain line. So I think that's important. And uh, just in this whole concept of like how to be a better, uh, I would say a driver, but let's just say like more of like train skills focused, uh, drift train skills focused rather. Um, I think another thing you could do too, like, I think it's really important. I've seen sometimes people join in. I mean, they're going backwards on track. Uh, that's just crazy. That's just absolutely crazy. Uh, obviously, if you're going the wrong way, you should reset. But I think what you should do before that, before you even start driving, especially in a lobby where you don't know anyone, this includes public tracks, but definitely even ours, right? See how people are driving. Maybe just watch a lap or two, like find where the, the train is. See where like the biggest group of people is. I think it's typically my... The thing that I do um, in, a, in or out of like our lobbies and a, definitely in like public lobbies, 
I'll just kind of see like, okay, what lines people are taking. And I'll typically look at like the best, uh, the biggest amount of drivers in a single, in a single drift train, right? Typically those drivers are going to be taking pretty decent lines, making pretty good adjustments and are going to be kind of like the, uh, maybe like a North star, what people are most likely going to shoot for. Cause they're going to want to be a part of that too. Right. Um, on, on how they're going to be driving. So I, I typically like sit back watch maybe like honestly in public lobbies i watch like five laps man i'll just sit there for a little bit just kind of see how things are going i might even like click someone spectate them uh watch them closely see how they're driving and then once kind of see okay that's how this is going out i can either decide okay yeah that's a good train i'll join up on or oh yeah i don't know man it's kind of looking weird i'm just gonna jump out do a couple laps see how i'm feeling and then uh you know see what happens either people join up with me or i see like another train form things like that if that makes sense sorry again a lot of things coming right at you but um just trying to give a lot of information and also try to be true to what we talked about and, and stay on topic so we are now switching over to cg bashlands now before this track we were on ht drift park <clears throat> we weren't on it for very long <clears throat> normally we like to stay for an hour but I, I don't think the lobby was really feeling it so we voted and uh we switched after 30 minutes so i didn't really include it i didn't think that there was any clips from there that really made sense for uh what we're trying to accomplish in this video so yeah we're on cg bashlands extremely fun track if you haven't driven it a lot of cool areas uh to kind of improve and there you can see on p2 making an adjustment because of an issue that i had on p1 they made an adjustment p3 tried to make the same adjustment and they're completely out and there you can see the train we have a huge uh school bus of a gap behind me and everyone else but now we switch over to a P2 position for me. We're gonna begin, watch that track cam, see what's going on. Ideally, I should be matching P1's line. You can see me a little bit too far forward here. Not too big of a deal. Good transition timing. And then here we see a little bit of accordion, a little bit of accordion, but enough of a proximity buffer that the train was able to stay alive. Now, I think if there was anyone after P5, that would probably have been an issue. There were a little bit of collision, but because of that proximity gap, able to eat all of those issues and continue driving and i and again i just i thought that was a really good example of hey like this is how that is in practice and it was really cool to see a lot of drivers um actually doing that uh on the track and this, this is a track that i haven't driven much of at all uh and i maybe the same for other people so again we're on p2 this is a whole different uh hot lap session we're still following p1 here trying to match his angle trying to match his line you see me make a slight adjustment there p3 p4 making a slight adjustment because of me and then here we go a little bit of recording because everyone was taking that line a little bit different p2 taking a different line having an issue p3 gone and there's a train again it's crazy if you think about it what we're talking about we are talking about little little issues you know everyone's driving as hard as they can hopefully i think from what i've seen i definitely think so um but everyone's trying to drive so close and so well that those little mistakes will really reverberate and and this is why i say like train drift train practice is really good practice because it's really sweaty and it forces you to be a good lead and a good chase at the same time so there you see me not leaving enough of gap hitting p2 making a little bit of mistake p4 going super shallow and shout out to p4 on the quick reset and not trying to just save it absolutely saving p4 p5 and anyone else that would have been behind them able to still stay inside and attach to this train me on p3 trying to stay with p2 p2 giving a lot more of a gap here than uh most most people that we've seen but again like they might just be adding a little bit of a gap because they're not feeling confident a little bit of that proximity just because they're not confident uh or unsure maybe even too on what p1's lines are going to look like and so really stable though uh overall yeah like we want to pull in the gap a little bit but i think that's really healthy for the train but here we are now on a what is that a p5 one two three four i'm not even sure i think we're at least the p5 they're making a little bit of a mistake you see the guy behind me having to make a mistake a little bit of uh turbulence in front of me and then here making the mistake a lot of other people were doing on the accordion but because of that proximity was able to fix it but then behind me you see three people die and you could argue it's not fully on me, but I would say like that is a little bit on me, pulling in a lot of that proximity, kind of giving a false sense of uh, forward momentum to everyone behind me, and then them trying to match it or maybe pull in. Because I was pulling in a lot of that proximity, they started to have to pull in a lot of their proximity because I was just pulling away from them. And then after that, boom, we have that crunch. 
But one second. <laughs> I need to drink water. My throat is actually starting to hurt. So this was our final. Uh, actually, there was a track before this was Ebisu uh, North course. Really wasn't uh, con conducive. I, a lot of C words that I'm saying that are kind of similar but different. But uh, really wasn't valuable for this conversation. So I skipped it. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. But we are now on Brooklyn Park, as most of you guys know. So if you can believe it, man, I feel like this 40 minutes has gone absolutely by really fast. I added this little block uh, at the end here just to kind of cool down a little bit. Uh, you can see there on the track cam as well, if you were watching, a little bit of static. I think it was on P2. Uh, not quick enough for reset. I, honestly, I was just kind of thinking about what I want to talk about next. So wasn't watching super close. I apologize. But uh, saw a little bit of issues there. And again, you see another uh, issue with the train just absolutely getting decimated, right? So that being said, I think there's two laps, uh, maybe three laps built into this. To just uh, just want to talk to you guys. Those of you that are have stayed on this long, uh, genuinely, I actually sincerely appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot to me that there's other people out there that are looking to get better and improve. I'm one of those people too, man. Uh, and, and I think this exercise for me, you know, this video did take a long time to edit was uh, kind of brutal, honestly, because I had to actually watch through every single run. I mean, there's 20 hours of footage, so um, you can imagine plus editing and this and that. Anyways, this isn't here to complain, but I just want to say it was very helpful for me to watch back. And I've said before, watching your replays are really important, man. And I think this is a great example of it. I learned a lot that maybe I ha I wouldn't have seen uh, Lime Rock thinking of that one specifically, but on a lot of these clips, like I really started to rethink about some of my lines some of the ways that I'm taking these different corners. There was a lot of learning opportunity in this video for myself. So I really hope that you came away from, uh, you know, something, you walk away with something from this video. And if we just dial it down to like, what are the main uh, core pieces of this video in a nutshell, right? We need to match our lead line. We need to match our lead angle. We need to match the transition timing of our lead. Those are massively important. Like those are gonna help you immensely. If you can do those three three things, you're you're, you're probably gonna be golden, honestly. Outside of that, if you're unsure, if you're following someone, if you're in the middle of the train, it is okay to add a proximity pocket. You do not need to be glued to the door. And sometimes if you're glued to the door and you feel like you're killing it and you're just on his door, on his door, it's crazy. If you watch a replay, I wonder if you're matching the angle. I wonder what you're sacrificing to be on that door. And those types of drivers, I'm just gonna be honest, people don't like to drive with and it's not really chaseable, right? And you're kind of like ruining the ability for a train to form, right? So like really, if you really wanna improve, like I, I genuinely, again, just wanna re-say, I think replay is a really, really valuable tool. I upload them every time uh, after our weekends up up to our mega. So you can download any track uh, that you want to rewatch. But also you can do it uh through a set of course as well right and then the final thing man please 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 if you make a mistake it's okay like that reset button as fast as you can dude I, and i think everyone across the acetyl community would appreciate that i think the biggest issue is if you are impacting the uh, ability for other people to drive other people to drift that's where people get frustrated if you don't do that i think you're fine if you also end up resetting too much, people are gonna be like, hey man, you don't need, you don't gotta reset, dude, you're chill, like we got you. It's a lot more of a positive conversation than that one person who makes a mistake and crashes every corner. Anyways, that's it, man. So thank you so much for watching, dudes. I really hope you enjoyed it. I, I would love to hear some feedback, your thoughts, anything you guys have for me. Again, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Absolutely appreciate it. Hope you see you this weekend. Hope your week goes by fast. And uh, yeah, hope to see you on track. Until next time, later.